Hello, Redwood Chapel family. Hope you're doing well on this Thursday. Uh, we are continuing our series in Advent on the theme of love. And so hopefully you've enjoyed the last few days on, um, on this theme. And hopefully it has helped you to um, just focus your, your mind and your heart on um, the love that God has given his, um, his creation, the agape type of love. Uh, the verse that we are looking at for today is Mark 1, uh, chapter 1, 1 through 8. And I'd like you, when we're done, to just read through that chapter. But what I want to do for our time together is just focus on mainly on verse 8, uh, but I want to read um, verse 7 as well. Actually, I want to I want I want to read verse six because I what I love about this verse is it describes who John is. And so, if you're not uh, familiar with Scripture, John the Baptist was a man that was um, called to pave the way for Jesus. He is the same age as Jesus at this time, and um, he is letting his disciples, those that follow him, letting uh, them know that there's somebody that's coming that's way better than him, and he's not even worthy of this person. And so what's interesting is is the description of John the Baptist. So I just want to give this to you so you can um, just imagine this. It says in verse 6, John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist, and his diet was locusts and wild honey. If you know me, you know that I love good food, and uh, I just can't imagine eating locusts and wild honey. Um I don't know why Mark did. Uh, maybe there's some answers out there. So if you are uh, a history buff or or you've you've come across something that says why John um, ate locusts and wild honey, please let me know because I don't know that answer. But um, I just think that's a great description of him. And so hopefully you'll get a kick out of that. Um, but let's read verse 7 and 8. Verse 7 says, And he was preaching and saying, After me, one is coming who is mightier than I. And I am not fit to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Now, John had these disciples uh, that would follow him. And sometimes when we think of disciples, we think of, um, they mean like Jesus's disciples. But that term disciples is is for just somebody that is following a, a teacher, following the teachings of a person. And so... John had his own and he is talking to them and letting them know, um, you know, they, they likely look up to him. They likely see him as somebody to follow and um, to hold on to his teachings. And so he's saying, this person that's coming is, is way better than me. I'm not even worthy of this person. So you can imagine the people thinking when they already think John the Baptist is great and awesome, somebody else is going to be coming that's even better. And so what I want us, there's so much we can talk about in this, but I want us to focus on verse 8. Uh, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. I was probably in my mid-20s, maybe late 20s, before I really understood the role of the Holy Spirit. I became a Christian in high school, and I just don't remember talking a lot about the Holy Spirit um, or the theology behind the role of the Holy Spirit. You know, people would talk about the Trinity, of course. Um but I just didn't know this relationship and connection you can have with the Holy Spirit and how God has given us that. If you read in Acts 1 about Jesus's ascension into heaven, he says to his disciples that it's better for him to leave so that another one can come. And that's the that's the precursor to the Holy Spirit coming upon those that are following him. And so uh, I, th I think of this agape love as what God would do to provide for his people. He, he knows <laughs> uh, that we cannot do things on our own. And so he's providing us um, a part of himself, the Holy Spirit, to be with each and every one of us that follow him. And so if that's not love... I don't know what it is. <laughs> I think of this agape love that means um, just this unconditional love and um, this love that God has for for his creation, for mankind, and um, that he would provide. He wouldn't just expect us to do everything on our own because we can't. We are 
wretched and broken and we can't do this on our own. So he would provide somebody for us. I think of this Holy Spirit or I think of the Holy Spirit as as one of my closest or my closest companion, one that is with me constantly, one that I'm talking to constantly. And so the couple questions that I want you to discuss or write in your journal or discuss with your family or friends is what is your understanding of the Holy Spirit? When you read that verse, why would, do you think that's a big deal? Do you, um, what is your understanding of the theology behind the Holy Spirit? Um, And the other question I want you to ask is how, or answer is how is the coming of the Holy Spirit, God providing the Holy Spirit in our life, how is that love to you? How would you see that as love? Sometimes we think of love as, um, you know, a girlfriend or or a spouse or somebody we think is cute. I work with her students. That's what they say all the time. But love is the sacrifice. It's this unconditional um, emotion and um, action that we're giving to another person. And so God does this. Um, I'm over on my time, but I love you guys. I'm going to pray for us, and then uh, hopefully you'll have a great day today. God, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for giving us yourself. I don't understand all the theology behind the Trinity, God, but I thank you for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are in my life, that you show me what to do, how to live my life. You open up my eyes to understand scripture. (sighs) Thank you. I pray that you would do the same for my friends at Redwood Chapel. I pray this all in your son's name. Amen. Love you guys. Have a great day.